How to wisely invest in AI working for your organization? So recently, many people have seen that AI could bring new opportunities for nonprofits, um, starting from doing things in a new way to optimizing things you are already doing. But starting with those technologies for many people is not easy. Uh, tech to the Rescue works with a global community of thousands of tech companies that are working with nonprofits and with thousands of nonprofits worldwide. And we observe that people try to experiment you know, differently. Some people write a long uh, proposal where they try to explain how they could use technology if only they had money. Other people ideate fantastic solutions that could transform the whole industry they are working in, but they have little capacity to actually start. And picking the right approach to, to start and to build capacity is very important because it's not a quick revolution that you would go through, but rather a marathon where you have to build uh, talent, resources, and awareness to actually use those technologies best. Uh, recently in my work, I come across uh, an elegant example of organization that is doing that very wisely. Yeah, and I want to present to you Odin Mudelheim, uh, who is a recently appointed head of Ashoka AI Lab and um, a person who started um, experiment with, experimenting with GPT-2. And then uh, uh, some months later, surprisingly found himself as a leading person who drives AI effort for this wonderful organization. Odin, could you please explain how you transformed from person who was experimenting with very simple tool uh, to a person who built a portfolio of products and who is pushing the uh, barrier for using AI in your organization? Gladly, hmm. thanks so much for the invitation. Mm, as you already mentioned, I, I started playing around with GPT-2 when that became publicly available, uh, just out of curiosity and like this urge to tinker with things. Um, I, I do have a programming background from a former job and that allowed me to, to just play with these things. I, like I, I used it initially to create, um, to let it write strategies for Ashoka, like the, my my employer. <laughs> now that, that was the kind of weird, like I still remember a strategy that it suggested that we should um, that we should develop brain surgery on a mass scale to convince people. Like, of course, completely ridiculous. But but the text was um, was interesting, and you could see where this is going. So immediately when GPT three came out, uh, I I sat down again and uh, and looked at serious applications that we could actually use in our work. Um, in that case, that happened to be a semantic fellow search. Like it's, we we support this global network of four thousand social entrepreneurs. Uh, Jacek is one of them, and. Um, and it's really important for us to, to find these people depending on what we are looking for, right? So if a journalist asks, you know, find us female social entrepreneurs in Latin America who are changing educational policies, we need to be able to find these people fast. And so far we can't. Um, so yeah, I built this um, with the help of an external volunteer, a machine learning expert um, from, from Amazon. And uh, that only took a few weeks, only part-time, like that wasn't really a big deal. Uh, and and that was quite valuable. So this, even this super simple application um, added a lot of value to the organization already. And, and then we built variations on top of that. And all of a sudden we had um, already like a small portfolio of apps, like one for journalists and one for fellow collaborations and one for internal benchmark and, and all based on the super simple application. And, and so it was clear that, uh, that this technology is quite powerful and you don't need to spend much time using it for your own purposes. Um, and that, that is now expanded to like within half a year, we created like nine, 10 AI apps for different purposes to tackle very specific um, things in our organization. And uh, yeah, that I mean, that was not that was not part of my actual job, um, but word got around. And uh, a few weeks ago, we, we had to present the whole suite of applications to the board, which was completely unaware of all of this stuff happening under the radar. Um, but yeah, things went very fast from there and like we now have officially launched the AI lab, which is something that even my colleagues globally don't know yet because the announcement email is just going out tomorrow. So, yeah. Okay, Odin, thanks for sharing. This is wonderful. So instead of 
building a grand vision of AI version of Ashoka, where algorithms are scouting for best change makers throughout the world. You basically focused on uh, identifying real problems of real people in the organization, including yourself, and solving them with you know, simple prototypes that provided value here and now, right? And this way, you build capacity, awareness, and political will to actually make this bigger investment into something that looks like prepared investment rather than crazy try to build something new because technology is emerging. How about small organizations like 10, 20 people, not 400, uh, where you might not have a person who is experienced with programming and basically a situation where organization is short of resources, but um, identifies some bottlenecks that could be solved with AI. Yeah, I think this is what you what you mentioned um, last in your question is the key. Like, um, pick pick a small actual problem um, where, like, if you can solve it or even accelerate it, that would already be valuable. Yeah. So, but but a concrete thing that does something. Um, and for for choosing the right use case, I would I would suggest using um, an internal problem, like something that the team has to do, but nobody in the outside world ever sees. Yeah. Um, it's it's just simpler and less risky that way. Um, pick a, a stupid task that at least somebody in the organization really hates, ideally several people, um, because that way, like if you just announce that you're working on this and just just be like the chance that they might never have to do this stupid task again makes like people will love you immediately, even just for trying, even if it fails, it doesn't matter. Like this this realization that this this could improve people's lives. Uh, is is paramount because then you have supporters yeah, for your initiative. People want you to succeed because of the stupid task that would be done. Um, and then ideally pick a, pick something that is where you can see that like a large language model or an image generator or whatever AI technology you you choose um, should in a very straightforward way be able to solve this thing. Like don't don't do complicated things. Like yeah. And then um, in terms of who should be working on this. Um, like, yeah, one or two people are enough. Like if you have anybody in the organization with any coding skills, or if you like, if it's not coding properly, like what, whoever is best at Excel, yeah, that's a good person to, uh, to use. Um, and ideally, um, try to find an external volunteer who has like, who has a bit more expertise, but like one or two, one, of, one of these two or a combination of those two should be enough to create your first product. Okay, so we have uh, identifying uh, uh, problems internally, uh, building prototypes that no one sees to not uh, risk too much, and then going forward from from the experience, from the uh, feedback you uh, will learn in the organization, and basically gradually building capacity to solve more and more problems and bring more and more value. Um, also, remember, you are not alone. And if you are short of technical expertise and talent in the organization, there are volunteers, there are organizations like Tech to the Rescue that could get you a professional technological team to build a solution, either first prototype that could uh, provide value and show that it makes sense or transform that early prototype into a full mature solution uh, that would uh, be shown to external world as well. Um, okay, Odin, last question. So what would you advise to a person who wants to experiment but has no political will in the organization or wants to get this political will? Yeah, don't don't um, wait for the political will or the, you know, or like, don't wait for your machinery to move. Yeah, move, the, like just build things, uh, get people excited about the value that these small things are already creating. And that will that will convince your board. That will convince your legal department to create the right environment. That will convince your IT department that they should invest some 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 of their time to create the right environment for you. But uh, like it's not uh, it's not that these things have to be there first. Like just just start building, and the rest will come. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.